You're listening to the Weekend Sport Podcast with Jason Pine from Newstalk ZB. Orange cards for sin bins are set to be introduced in top-level football. The International Football Association Board, IFAB as they are known, they're the guardians of the laws of the game, they've agreed in principle to test the concept of orange cards in elite competitions like the Premier League as early as next season. Now, the orange card would be shown to a player who displays words or actions of dissent, but could also be used to penalise tactical fouls that disrupt the flow of play. And if a player gets an orange card, they'd basically leave the pitch for 10 minutes, very much like a sin bin in rugby. Our top men's referee is Matthew Conger, who has officiated at the last two men's World Cups. He joins us now. Do you like the idea of orange cards, Matthew? There are certainly elements of uh, the, the the proposal that are appealing um, as a as a match official, and I should say also, uh, Jason, great to talk to you. Um, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see in the implementation how um, you know the, the the devil's always in the details, right? Absolutely right. So, so yeah, it wasn't an effusive yes from you to say, yeah, get that orange card to me. I'm, I, I want to use it. What, what are you? Uh, what are your? I guess your 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 reservations about about the way it might uh, it might work, and as you say, the the devil that might be in the detail here. Well, I think um, so. I, so I've had the privilege of being able to to study. Um, refereeing from the I guess a research perspective uh, over the last few years and while it's uh, important to recognize that we need to deal with the the mobbing the antisocial behavior that is part of the sport um, I I just think we've we've seen a number of different um, I guess uh, actions that have tried to to deal strictly with behavior and not really looking at what is the underlying relationship between referees players and coaches and how do we change that you know on a on a deeper level so that there's much better understanding of how um we all work together to enable the beautiful game so in other words um if i'm hearing that right rather than being you know being able to dish out an orange card or, or whatever color card for dissent you'd rather look at the the root cause of the dissent and try to have less of it Yes. Yep. Probably that. And so if you look at the research, um, a, a lot of the dissent happens uh, when there is a, a real distance between the players, coaches and referees. So it's just and we see it, uh, of course, with social media. If you don't know the person, you know, it's easy to lob those um, the vitriol or whatever. If in and um, again, this is, I guess, we've not seen a lot of it in practice. There have been pockets of it where where um, it's been tried, but where referees, players, and coaches are training together on a more regular basis, there's a greater level of respect that's built in. So players get to see, oh, wow, look at how much work, you know, uh, these people are putting in uh, on their training and their understanding of the game. And equally, players, uh, sorry, the referees also um, working with players saying, okay, right, now I understand a little bit more of what they're trying to do tactically or where the game is growing. So it's, it's not so reactive. It's, it's, it's um, yeah, really looking at, at that broader um, growth of the game. Is that time spent together away from an actual competitive match something that we are likely to see more of? Is that in the pipeline? Well, if you look at New Zealand rugby, for um, example, they have now embedded their top super rugby player, uh, rugby referees with teams. So mm. I think uh, Paul Williams is down with the Crusaders. Um, ben O'Keefe, I think, is with the, um, the Hurricanes. And they're training with them regularly. Now, that means that they are not being appointed to those matches in a competitive sense. But from all the feedback I've heard at an organizational level and also from um, even um, Ben himself has said, uh, that that has led to a, a greater, in this past season, a, a greater flow of the game, a greater understanding of the game. They've seen less controversy in the Super Rugby competition this past year. And we do a similar thing at the FIFA level. So when we're preparing for FIFA tournaments, um, a week, 10 days before each major tournament, we're actually training regularly with players as well. So that's, again, part of our own practice, making sure that we're sharp. But we recognize the, the, that the players that we're working with are, um, you know, y- you build a bit of rapport with or, you you know, it, it doesn't impinge, I suppose, on that uh, 
unbiasedness as well. You've got to be careful with that. But um, yeah, so we, we, I've seen it as, as a very positive potential. Just back to the orange card, let's take it down a hypothetical trail. Let's say that uh, that you know, a player knew that if they did um, show dissent towards a match official um, over a certain line, they they might be faced with 10 minutes on the sideline. Do you think that would act as an effective deterrent? Uh, yes, I think it would in, in some regards. And, and of course, in New Zealand, some football federations have trialled this through the temporary dismissal at the um, grassroots level. Um, and there has been uh, some effectiveness there. Um, I, I personally also like the, I guess, t- to go back, um, if you look at Nigel Owen's comments around this, um, his, his recent interview with the BBC, he was saying that it will be a, a big culture shock um, for, uh, for football players. So um, it, it will be interesting to see how it's, how it's played out. I personally wouldn't mind being able to maybe go one step back and say, hey, uh, if you're dissenting a decision, we can move the, the, you know, let's say on a free kick, we can move the free kick forward 10 meters. And mm-hmm. then if it moves into the penalty area, then now it's a penalty. I think that would be an interesting, uh, let's say, half step trial before going full 10 minutes because 10 minutes and, and the people that are, you know, the voices that are really saying, whoa, we need to be careful with this. 10 minutes in a football match down uh, a player, you know, um, it, it can be pretty, it can have a big impact on the game, right? Um, it, it, whether, you know, you end up with a much more defensive setup or, you know, one goal in a, in a football match makes a, makes a big difference compared to say even, you know, a try or a penalty in rugby where it's, where it's comparable. Um, yeah. So, I'd love to see a little bit of a half step. Let's try, you know, give us the power to go, yep, 10 meters. And I think that would even start to to quell the um, quell the mobbing, quell, you know, the dissent, that sort of thing. Yeah, well, I mean, that's been the case in rugby, hasn't it, for a long time. If you if you say something to the ref, you're immediately marched 10 meters. It's been around for a long time. Mm. The other part as mm. well, Matthew, is yeah, what, if a, what if a goalkeeper shows dissent and he gets an orange, he or she gets an orange card, then what? What do you bring another keeper on? Or what, does one of the outfield players have to go and goal for 10 minutes? Exactly. Yeah. And, and that can happen. And then, and then you're saying, well, you know, it, it does get a little bit tricky if you're saying, well, the captain has the right to speak, um, which captains already <laughs> feel they have the right to speak. Anyway, we have to remind them uh, that, that that's not actually part of the law. But um, yeah, uh, you know, what does that look like? And what does, again, reasonable behavior look like? Um, and that's why I come back to, you know, looking at sport organizations um, that provide greater support, greater um, funding uh, towards refereeing, inter- you know, to, to interact more in that training sense with players, coaches, and officials um, would, be, would be really uh, worthwhile in the long term, I think. Indeed, indeed. Just before you go, you, you've mentioned the word mobbing a couple of times, and, and we all know what it is. And we've all seen it. The referee surrounded by players up up in your grill, really having mm-hmm. a go. How unpleasant a part of your profession is that? It, it's it's um, sometimes it's really unpleasant, especially if I have a question about the decision that I've made. So if I'm unsure then all of a sudden I'm, you know, it's like, whoa, whoa, hang on. Uh, it makes it even more, I guess, threatening. Yeah. Um, if, if I'm pretty confident in, in the decision I've made, then um, I can regulate that feeling of, you know, players coming in. I can deal with that pretty, pretty comfortably. Um, but it is, and especially because it's the, the culture of it, when you see it happening at the professional level, that filters all the way through to the, to the grassroots. So, I mean, this... You know, the, the emotional intelligence, the, the communication skills that I've built up over the past 20 plus years, uh, well, geez, it's nearly 30 years of refereeing, actually, um, have, uh, you know, now I'm able to say, by and large, I feel like I've got the skills to be able to handle that. Of course, the, the issue being that happens at the grassroots level where often it's a younger referee or less experienced referee. And then it becomes really daunting, you know, uh, especially if there's an age difference, you know, a younger referee with older players, um, sometimes a gender difference. That can be really, um, yeah, really quite 
threatening. Uh, and we know, again, statistically that, um, so there's about a 30% annual um, attrition of referees in every sport they leave. And it only takes two or three incidents of this antisocial or mobbing behavior, um, dissent, sometimes it's outright abuse, for younger referees to then to say, you know what, I I've got better things to do with my weekend. Um, thanks, I'll, I'll go find something else to do. And the game then suffers. So yeah, we have to, we've, we've got to continue to um, support the development, the retention of referees um, at, at an organizational level, at all levels of the game. The other part's the crowd, isn't it? And and not just the crowd at the game, but as you mentioned before, on social media. It's it's rare for a player to get on social media and have a go in an official after the game. But um, but fans, man, it, it just feels like open slather. Is there any mm. solution there, Matthew? Uh, that's a, a it's a tricky one. I'm for that reason not very active on social media at all. Um, at the same time, it's a, it's a double-edged sword because we want people to see, you know, um, the great work that referees are doing both on and off the pitch. So um, there's, there is that sort of avenue, which is traditionally been taken, just stay off social media. Um, but I, I agree with the calls to say, hey, look, if there's abusive behavior or abusive um, words that are being said, people are being threatened, then, then there needs to be some accountability um, of the people that are making those. And, and um, I don't know how to, I guess, police that, but we probably need to report that more regularly so that the scale and the size of the problem, rather than just deleting the comments or you know blocking it, but actually um, really making it clear the size of the, the problem there is uh, probably a good step in that direction. I just think that's such a shame because because one of the best uses of social media is to um, is to celebrate your achievements. You know, players do it all the time. People in all walks of life. I mean, often often you know, Facebook, Instagram, whatever it is, is often you know your the, your life's highlights. Why shouldn't a referee who has achieved their life's highlight be able to celebrate that on social media without the risk of people just piling on? Yeah, I I agree with you. I, th I think that's a really good point. Um, you know, uh, and I don't, I don't know, maybe that's uh, something that, you know, maybe players that are more professional, I guess, in that sense, maybe they've got some support there from uh, media managers or something along those lines. It's not really the case with referees. Um, but yeah, it, it just shouldn't be. It shouldn't be that, that we, um, uh, that people feel the, the need to, to pile on. Everybody is a, you know, a pretty good armchair referee <laughs> from, from, from their living rooms. But, um, you know, one other aspect, I, I suppose, of this is that we, again, going back to the, the broader sport organizations, if there was greater celebration and visible celebration from the, the national sport bodies, um, even let's say, you know, New Zealand it would be New Zealand sport. If there was that recognition and celebration of, the accomplishments of our referees across multiple codes, then maybe that would start changing that dial as well. Um, so, yeah, again, that's, that's something I would love to see um, that, you know, there's regional sport awards. There's often refereeing um, is part of that. Uh, but even at the national level, I mean, we've got referees that, you know, really excel from Quite, in some ways, you know, it's difficult to referee the global game from such a small corner of the world. But, um, uh, you know, we have people that have, have achieved some pretty great things that deserve more recognition. Absolutely. Fascinating topic. Matthew, it's been uh, a real education talking to you. Uh, we've gone off on a, a couple of different tangents, which I didn't expect. I just thought we'd talk about orange cards, but we're, we've <laughs> gone all over the place, which has been fantastic. Thanks for taking the time this afternoon. It's my pleasure. Great to talk to you, Jason, and uh, we'll look forward to talking again. Yeah, I'll look forward to that as well. Matthew Conger, one of our top referees, officiated at the last two Men's World Cup. For more from Weekend Sport with Jason Pine, listen live to News Talk ZB weekends from midday or follow the podcast on iHeartRadio.